Alright everyone, welcome back to Steve's Gaming Dungeon. Today we're going to be doing another 101 lesson for Tailspire building. This time we're going to focus on DM tools. I've gotten a few requests to do a video like this, so we're just going to jump right in here. Open up my Southcom map. Uh, it's going to take us to my most recent slab. Um, but we're going to go ahead and go to a smaller one. Let's go to my Travel Pass 1. I was using this to practice last night. It's nice and small. It's perfect for stuff like this. It's also available on Tails Tavern if you want it. It's a good um, like random encounter pass when people are kind of going through traveling. This is a good one to use just to have them get ambushed. Anyways, uh, so it, um, the tutorial actually covers uh, DM tools pretty well here, so we're going to go into that. Um, the Game Master tools, so give player control of a mini. This is important. Um, this is what, a, what players are going to need when they upload their Hero Forge miniatures. It's good to have them have control of it. So the GM menu is here when you right click on a figure and then there's the GM tools there is a whole little separate menu in here. So let's walk through here giving player control of a mini that is player permission here you click on that. I have a lot of people in my campaign but you just need to pick the correct person. Then. Uh, enable flying, that's easy. That's just this one here. It's a toggle on and off. Hide or reveal, that's also easy. Uh, that's this little half, if invisible half shown, so it's, it's just it's, it's also a toggle. Um, we're gonna actually leave that one toggled and I'll, if you hit tab, this is the, like the G, I call it GM vision. Um, it's like a special vision only the owner of the map can see, the GM can see. The players cannot. So I can see this invisible figure, this invisible figure, but they cannot, even if they're right up next to it. It's up to me to expose it. Okay. Uh, expiration mode, that's actually what we're in right now. This is turn-based mode and expiration mode right up here at the top, the little hourglass and the little footprints take you in and out of it. <coughs> and then cutscene mode is actually something I don't use very often. Um, but essentially what it does is you, let's say I, I want to show these two cows, right? So I'll grab a shot and then I believe you hit tab and you can make, you can place a cinematic block, right? So for the cinematic block, you grab the shot here, save and close at the bottom there. Then what happens is, is when your player steps on it, it's going to show them this. It's like a trigger. <clears throat> okay, and then, so you could make it so like, let's say that there is a lever they need to pull to unlock the door you can make the cinematic block show which door that the lever unlocked for example that's a good way of using it um, but my, me myself I, I don't use them very often it's really really basic but you know it's nice to know that it's there um, cutscene to enter this mode the mode freezes all player activity and renders your shots on their screens. So they can see that same bar, I believe. Or no, no, they're, they're saying that, just like I said earlier, you, it pops up for them and shows them. See, just like it is in the video here. Okay, you can set up shots with the left click, grab shot button, the eye icon to show the players. The movie reel icon will move the shots to a GM block where you can save it within the GM overlay, which is the tab. Okay. Um, and then 
that takes us to the next one, which is the Game Master overlay. Yeah, and then now they're talking about, I, I kind of jumped the gun here. So pressing tab, this is something like a GM screen. Here you can perform tasks on the board that the players cannot see or have access to. Um, I use marker blocks all the time. Um, they're just a great way to like mark doors, uh, levers, chests, stuff like that. Atmosphere blocks. <clears throat> Let's read the markers first. Markers can be placed and activated to fetch all players to a certain area on the board. More functionality will come to these in time, but right now it kind of, I think it just shows them the shot of where it is, and then they can kind of move their figures over to it. Yeah, that's what happened last time I did it, at least. Atmosphere blocks. Um, so let's say they go from like inside to outside. You can change it from light to dark. I uh, want to change the atmosphere quickly when players walk into a dimly lit tavern. The atmosphere blocks are a good way to store changes in the atmosphere you'd like to have for certain areas on the board. So let's take a practice with that. A tab here, atmosphere block. Put it right in front of this one here. And then we can change it to nighttime. So that way when he walks onto it, it should, did I, oh, did I save it? Hold on. Edit. Save and close. Oh no, it's not working. Maybe it doesn't work with the DGM. Save and close. Let's get out of the GM mode. Um, that's weird. Why isn't it working? Well. Changing atmosphere quickly. Okay, so he puts it there. It saves it. Okay. Oh, he did like a little plus. What was that? Apply. Oh, you gotta you gotta hit the plus. Uh, I wish it kind of was just automatic when they stepped on it, but. Oh well. I, that's another one I don't use very often. I just change the settings myself as a GM when they get close and when they're not. I just change it back. You know? I don't use it very often. Um, that takes us to... Cinematic blocks. We kind of covered these already. Functions very much like cinematic mode. Here you can store cinematic information. Helpful if certain rooms or areas of the board need their own special attention. Like I was saying with like a locked door perhaps would be a good use of this. But all it really does is give them like a screenshot. So the term cinematic is a little much. But hide volumes, these ones I actually use all the time. <clears throat> hide volumes are basically ways for you to hide portions of your map until you're ready to reveal them. They are in the tab menu. Uh, create a hide volume. Let's say I wanted to cover half of this map. So you just drag out. See? And then when you hit, hit tab to get out of the tab menu, now the players are going to be seeing this. And you go into, you hit tab again, then you say edit hide volumes toggle visibility here to bring it back on. It's that easy. Um, what other GM tools do I use? That's pretty much it for the tutorial. Is there anything in other? No, photo mode, not really. Um, so Tailspire is still in early access. There's still more stuff coming out. So their GM tools are kind of limited right now. I guess some other stuff you might want to know is maybe like 
these stats here you can change. You could make like the red one health, for example. Uh, you know, and this one will be gold, maybe. You can change all of these to whichever you want. Strength, wisdom, uh, charisma, uh, dexterity. Uh, what am I forgetting? Constitution. Here. Um, and if you need to change your tiles type, so like right now I have it feet and the tile size is five, so that way when you move a figure, it'll show you how many feet it's moving. To I get a lot of questions about this actually. To turn that on, um, press M as in Mary then the number four to toggle it on and off. See down on the bottom right how it's turning on and off the little figure here? Uh, when it's on it does that measurement while you move your figures for you. It, it measures for you so it's a lot easier than having to use the ruler and manually measure like we used to. This is a relatively new feature that they brought out um, a few months ago. Well, yeah a couple months ago and uh, it's really nice to have. So that's how you toggle it on. You can also just open it by going down to the menu, left clicking, and just toggling it on and off like this. But usually the fastest way to explain it to someone in a game is press M for Mary, then press the number four, and you're good to go. Okay, what else? Um, one thing I noticed, as a DM, you could, like my character here for example, he can see these cows up here, but that's because I'm the owner of the map and I can see them. Players have like fog of war vision, where if it's not in their line of sight, they're not going to be able to see these, even though I can. I don't know how to turn that off for myself without like locking myself out of my own map. <laughs> um, but essentially, yeah, that's... I noticed that we had a little issue with that last night in my game where he couldn't see the enemies even though they were right around the corner and it's just because they weren't in his line of sight so you gotta keep that in mind as a DM um, and then uh, as far as building tools like building DM privileges let's go into build mode here Um, you can cut your whole menu up here is essentially what you need. Toggle the grid on and off. This is where the light is if you need it. it kind of follows you around like a flashlight, basically. Uh, water build. water build before. I'm not really sure what this does. Toggle water build display. I've never used this. Let's ask our good friends over at Tailspire. have any questions you can always go over to the Tailspire Discord into their Tailspire chat and just ask the devs and the mods over there are very helpful and they will give you any info that they can um, I'm curious because if this is what I think it is which I doubt but oops you don't want that um, then we might be able to add water into small areas, which would be something I've been wanting for months, but I, I'm not really seeing it do anything. It's like I had it for a second there. Maybe I need to bring the water up. Oh, that's why. That's what it is. I figured it out. Uh, 
and he answered just in time. He beat me to it. All right, so if you basically just want to turn off the opacity of the water. Um, this would probably be useful if I wanted to make this a underwater map, for example. So if I raise this up, it's, it would be easier to see, you know. And then you just got to use your imagination. Because otherwise, if you turn this on, you know, you're going to be like this the whole time, which is very cool. I would probably leave it like this because it's very atmospheric, but you, you can turn it off if you want to. I like the bubbles. Devs are always adding cool stuff. I love that. All right, well, uh, that's about everything I can think of for a quick uh, GM Tools tutorial. If you guys have any other questions, just let me know down in the comments or on my Discord, whichever, and I'll try to get to it and, and answer, okay? Uh, tune in next time. Peace out.